In this video I'll be going through the 2011 Atoms, Photons and Nuclei paper. Question 1. Fission reactions take place in a nuclear reactor when moving neutrons hit uranium nuclei. In one of the possible fission reactions, one neutron hits a nucleus and breaks it into krypton and barium. Write a nuclear equation for the reaction and name the other particles produced during the reaction. So to start off we have our uranium-235 which is being hit with a neutron where a neutron has an atomic mass of 1 and an atomic number of 0. Following the fission reaction we have our krypton plus our barium and possibly something else. Now if we first look at our atomic numbers, the atomic numbers on this side add to 92 and on this side they also add to 92. Meaning that if we have another particle it will have an atomic number of 0. Looking at our atomic masses they add to 236 whereas on this side they add to 233. Meaning that we have three unaccounted for atomic masses. Since the missing particle has an atomic number of 0 it must be a neutron and because we need three Three atomic masses there must be three of them and so to name our other particles these are three neutrons. If the moving neutron has kinetic energy of 7.45 times 10 to the minus 16 joules show that this energy contributes negligible mass to the mass of the moving neutron. So we can find our extra moving mass because we know that E is equal to mc squared which means that m is equal to E over c squared we can just substitute these numbers. Which gives me 8.28 times 10 to the minus 33 kilograms to three significant figures. Our neutron mass is given above 1.6749 times 10 to the minus 27. So we can see that the extra mass is around a million times smaller than the neutron mass, so is negligible. If all the energy released from the fission of one uranium-235 nucleus is converted to a single photon, calculate the frequency of the photon produced. We know that the photon energy is equal to Planck's constant times its frequency. Rearranging for frequency, we get E over H, but we don't know the energy. To find the energy, we can use E equals mc squared, where E is the energy released and m is the change in mass, which we need to find. To do this we need to find our initial mass, which is the mass of our uranium-235 plus the mass of a neutron, both of which we're given here. Which gives me 3.9189 times 10 to the minus 25 kilograms. Now for our final mass, that is going to be the mass of our krypton, the mass of our barium, and the mass of three neutrons. Once again, all of which we're given up here. Which gives me 3.9159 times 10 to the minus 25 kilograms. Now to find our change in mass, we just need to find the difference between our initial and final masses. Which gives me 3 times 10 to the minus 28 kilograms. Now using that to find our energy. Which gives me 2.7 times 10 to the minus 11 joules. And now using that to find our frequency. Gives me 4.07 times 10 to the 22 hertz. Calculate the total binding energy of a uranium-235 nucleus. To find the total binding energy, we need to take the mass of the nucleus when it's bound together, which we're already given all the way up here, and the mass of all the parts when they're unbound, which consists of 92 protons. And to find the amount of neutrons, we take the mass number of 235 and subtract 92 to find that we have 143 neutrons. Which gives me 393.3899 times 10 to the minus 27 kilogram. And we know that our bound mass is the 390.2182 times 10 to the minus 27 kilogram that we're given earlier. And now to find the difference to find our mass deficit. Which gives me 3.1717 times 10 to the minus 27 kilogram. And now we can find our energy, knowing that E is equal to mc squared, putting in our mass and the speed of light. 
which gives me 2.85 times 10 to the 10 joules to three significant figures. Explain in terms of binding energy why the mass of a uranium-235 nucleus is less than the total mass of its constituent nucleons. When nucleons are bound together, they lose energy, binding energy, and therefore mass, mass deficit. This amount of energy must be performed to separate the nucleus. Question 2. State what a photon is, and describe how it can be produced by electrons within an atom. A photon is a packet of electromagnetic energy. They are produced when electrons transition from higher to lower energy shells. X-rays are used to take photographs of bones inside the body. X-ray photons typically have frequencies in the range of 10 to the 16 to 10 to the 19 hertz. An X-ray photon has energy of 191 electron volts. Calculate the frequency of the photon. First of all, we can convert this into joules by multiplying it by the charge of an electron. Which gives me 3.06 times 10 to the minus 17 joules to three significant figures. Now we know that E is equal to HF, and so we know that F is equal to E over H. Putting our numbers in. Gives me 4.62 times 10 to the 16 hertz. When X-ray photons hit calcium, electrons are released. The frequency of a photon will have to be more than the threshold frequency if an electron is to be released. Discuss this statement in terms of the underlying physics principles. The electrons are bound to their positive nuclei. A certain amount of energy, the work function, must be provided to free the electrons. The frequency of a photon with this energy is called the threshold frequency. X-rays of frequency 1.53 times 10 to the 16 hertz cause the emission of electrons from a material with a maximum kinetic energy of 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Calculate the threshold frequency for the release of electrons from the material. We know that our photon energy, given by HF, where this is our F, is spent on our work function, the energy required to liberate the electrons, and what remains is released in the form of this kinetic energy. Solving this for our work function by subtracting EK from both sides, putting our numbers in, gives me 7.96 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Now, if we have a photon with the energy of our work function, its energy could also be written as HF, where F is the threshold frequency. Solving this for F by dividing both sides by H, putting our numbers in, gives me 1.20 times 10 to the 16 hertz to three significant figures. Explain why, if a photon causes an electron to jump to a high energy level, the exact energy of the photon is critical, but if it is used to release an electron from the atom, it is only the minimum energy of the photon that is critical. To excite an electron to a high energy level, the photon must have the exact energy required for a transition, otherwise the photon will not be absorbed. To release an electron from an atom, only a minimum photon energy threshold is required, as any energy above this will be added to the electron's kinetic energy.